pinch, sweep the bread up. Want to find the eye here? Yeah. Obviously simulate the bite. You're not biting him. You simulate. Okay? What do you think is more efficient for me to just bite him or bite him with primal tenacity? So, so what I mean is this. I could do this. Or I could do this. Got it? structure of the face. You can't hit it hard, but it's just if you touch it, you'll open his face up with elbows if you put any impact in. So that's why he's got protection. And the hard plastic hitting your elbow itself will chip bones in your own elbow. So you want protection both sides. Also want to simulate putting in the headbutt. So I don't want to headbutt that. I'm going to put this on. So we both back this and we work from here. You've got to take his neck down, headbutt, elbow. Knee. Around, hip, hip, elbow, knee. Don't work off that. And then he'll do the same to me. Here. Push, 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 push. Okay. Push, 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 push. Good. Box on. Got it? We both got kit on. So you can touch. It's not a lot of impact. Get the feel what it feels like to plant shots. Don't just stay restricted. Once I've got here and head by the knee, if I elbow it now, I can put the line up to go into something else. Understand? So just watch these two do it. Now 20 seconds, first whistle, you're on the attack. Full speed, limit the power, but start with clinch, head butts, knees, elbows, gouging, work off that, add the snatch. Thought you might be one. Yep. Yeah? I'm gonna wanna blow the whistle because down my cock shoot. Right now. Mm -hmm. Shut back up. Good, big position. Good. Okay, this time off for a bit of resistance. As soon as he's got you, just pull, try and pull away. Boxers have this kind of range because they're pugilists. They use their hands. That's what they use. You know, it's all kickboxing matches or tie boxing starts from about a foot and a half further because they use their feet. So if you think about MMA in terms of sport, you've got feet range, hands range, and then when we're looking at clinch, which can often be standing and then on the ground. So in sport terms, there's three ranges. 
kicking, striking, grappling. In the street, there's, there's one range. In your fucking face, that's it. If it's not in your face and there's two feet, you've got punching range or striking range. Or you've got in your fucking face, which will be stood up or on the ground. If you don't manage this effectively, it quickly deteriorates the in your fucking face range. So if you end up in that in your fucking face range, it's important that the first thing you understand is you've got to stay on your feet. So that's all about balance. So if he pushes, my, his inertia pushes my shoulders past the plane of my hips, where am I going? Wow. I'm going on the ground. So the first thing I must do if our bodies clash is get my nose down over my toes and this leg piped. Do you understand? Mm. So that I've got structure and balance. This is here for one nanosecond of the thing before something else happens. It's here that it's useful if I can use all my tools. So I can't really strike in my head body from here, but I can rip it out and boom, and now I can hit it. See the deal? But quite often, if you're encumbered at the top, as long as you've got base, you can still use your low line tools. So your low line tools are your feet and your knees. Footwear is relevant. So if you've got hard shoes like brogues, or work boots, you know, or solid, sturdy trainers, you can still get a good effect. You're not getting much of an effect in fucking flip flops. Do you understand? So let's look at what you could do momentarily if you were encumbered here and couldn't use your hands. Well, I have this nice little stomp onto the toes, the toe point into the shin, that's a boot kick here, and I have a groin kick. See the deal? So I can still efficiently use my feet from here. You slow it down, I've got a stomp, I've got a toe point into the shin, I've got a shin kick, I've got a boot kick here, I've got a knee into the groin, into the thigh, I can kick that out. There's stuff I can do. So I want you to get adept with using your feet for the pure reason is covered me here I can't really do much but I don't want to do that now I have to do that do you see the deal? so it's just to create something else it's a secondary weapon so we're going to work it your partner's got on this side good shin protection so you can use the heel to just stomp the foot don't take the piss toe pump into the shin Use the ball of your feet, inside edge of your boot, to kick into here, into here, using both sides. You know, just stop, toe point, knee to right, that's all you want. You've got this for the knees, and this for the low line. So from that same position, I'm just going to work from here, here, push, move him around, get the hook, here, just push, 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 working low line shots. Understand? Okay? This is a momentary position before something else will happen. He shut me down here because either I've hit him but not knocked him out and he doesn't want to get hit anymore, or he knows I'm going to hit him and he's just shut me down. From here there'll be a push-pull struggle and most situations can end up on the ground from here. Not where you want to go, do you understand? If he pushes me and his pressure's forward and my is past my hips, which way am I going? Down. Down. On my arse, right? So the very first thing my body's clash is I've got to get my nose over my toes and pike my foot back so I've got some leverage. From here, all I'm going to do is reach down his back and pull up his shirt. Okay? I'm not looking to pull this over his head so that he can just pull his arms out of it. So if I pull this up, I'll punch it into the nape of his neck so that I, it, it, I've got more control of it. From here I'll start working him over. His natural reaction to get hit on this line will be to cover it. From here now I'll branch and go to another line and start working him over again. Do you understand? So here's the drill. You're just going to close in. Whatever hand you can get higher, doesn't matter wherever you are, reach down the spine to whatever you can get. Take the clothing, and control it into his head. If you get this, this is great. Chances are, you'll get a power play struggle here. From here, I just want you to strike what you can hit and start working until he does that. Then start pounding the high line. Drive him down and move. You got it? Yeah. If you're in this position here when you do this, and I snatch this free and start working it here, at best, 
I'm going to get one shot before he covers. In an adrenalized state, you go midbrain, so you'll quite often see people doing this, come on, doing this and getting no effect because they're locked into the thinking of what they're doing. You, know? you need to try and cultivate the ability to, if I feel that doesn't feel right, I do something else. This first target line was there, but now it's gone. The resource has been used. Take another resource. Do you understand? So my options here, if I'm here and we're struggling, if I just see that and get that, is I start to wail him here. And it will automatically change skill. You know? I start like this, oh fuck it, there's the old bollocks and there's the head. Do you understand? It's not something that you will consciously think about. You have to cultivate the feel. You know? That's why partner work is important, because you get to feel what it feels like to <coughs> manhandle and know where targets are. <coughs> so here, I just want the same thing, so I'm going to swim inside so I get it. And he comes inside to take it off me. I come inside, get it off him. This is just a swim drill. You know? It's much like pummeling on the high line. Then from there, when I take it this time, I'm just going to turn and relocate the position. Then he'll take it inside, inside, and turn me in. And here, here, and turn. And turn. While you're doing this, don't focus on him, but focus on what's around you. Okay? So the object being in the moment, combatively, if I was to twitch him and eat him, I want to turn to, to get away from you. I want to turn to look for any further subject. And now I'll just get this position. He comes here and turns. So slowly, one, two, and then I'll turn. And then you go, one, two, and turn. Got it? Show me down. He's to get some tactile awareness, sensitivity, so that's an attribute <coughs> developing thing. It's just a drill also that puts us at extreme close quarters, confined. It confines the hand, so it's useful to use within this model, just for training and attribute development, the ability to develop your strikes from this very tight range. So, for example, if he takes this clinch here, and then I get it back off him here, if I pull one hand free, in this case my left, because he still kept me encumbered, keep me here, my hand hasn't got much distance to travel. I can't pull it right back, it's just here. So I want to cultivate the ability to hit him just with this palm shot from this position. Then he'll take the clinch in, you know, one, two, and then from here, boom, that's all he's got, that little shot again. Boom, just this little shot. One, two. So how do I manifest power just from these few inches here? Not just with my hand, it teaches me how to drop my body weight and drive forward and use my hips. Then I'll come back again, you're inside, inside, boom, palm, inside, inside, palm, outside, do it again, inside, take the shot. Okay, boom, good, so I'm here, inside, inside, there's my shot. And here I'm inside, inside, boom, there's his shot. Take the pinch now, here, I go inside, inside, and from this range I just want a nice tight hammer fist, just, just from this small range, striking down on the jawbone. And he'll come inside, inside, boom, and hit me, inside, inside, just this tight range. So what I've got is the inside the crook of his elbow, to his chin. So it teaches me targeting from a tight range and how to drop my weight. Boom, boom, boom. Like this. You could add a helmet to this, which makes it a lot more fun. But we're just being tactile, so we're just going to place our weapons. So he takes the clinch here, I come inside, inside. Now I want an elbow. I don't have a roundward configuration. So the only way I can use my elbow from here is straight up. Like so. And then he'll come inside, inside, boom, straight up. And again, he'll one, two, boom, straight up. And he'll one, two, boom. So I'm really trying to keep him in tight, and he's trying to do the same here with me. So I haven't got any room. Bam! This is where I put the shot. All right. so you can work all your ECQ weapons from here. So you can work your palm, your hammer, and your elbow. But you can also work gouging and head biting from here. Mm -hmm. So if he takes this position again, keeping me tight, he's got me encumbered. I'm coming inside and inside, so his head is on me. 
from here, I'll just wipe the eyes as if I'm gouging, and boom, drop the head in. And he'll be the same. Inside, inside, get my head back, boom, put it in the headbutt. Inside, inside, gouge, boom, headbutt. Again, one, two, boom. Inside, inside, gouge, boom, headbutt like so. Okay, so take now. So he'll take the clinch from here. I just sneak inside, inside. From here, I'm just going to reach to grab the chin and rotate, turn it, and put it on the ground. Okay, on this side, you can that pinch here. I've got one, two, get the chin ripped, take it down, and pin it. Okay, last one from there, you can mix in. You'll take this position, I'll go one, two, put in the knee, and then snatch. Okay, and he'll do the same. From here, you go one, two, put your knee, and then snatch straight down. 